Welcome everyone. We are here with the Renegade Society radio show this evening and I am so excited because we have a lot going on that we're going to talk about very soon. But first, I want to introduce our special guest for the week, Denzel Thomas. Thank you for joining us so much, Denzel. How's it going? Hello, everyone. What's good? What's deal? How you doing? How you feel? It's your friendly neighborhood, Black Shivers Nerd, here with the Renegade Radio Society. And I must say, I must drop this Mass Effect uh, pun. I, as a chivalrous nerd, I feel rather out of context because as a paragon, I'm chilling with some renegades. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear you're a bit of a renegade, so you're in good company. We're very happy to have you here. And we asked you to join us today because we wanted to talk about RPGs, which is something that I have just sort of dipping my toes into a little bit, but you are an expert. You've been playing RPGs for a long time. I even hear that you do it on sort of a more professional scale. You actually act on stage. You are part of a theater company that you're just the real deal. So um, I'm super excited to talk about all of that. But before we jump in too far, I do have a few little short things I wanted to tell our fans before I forget. Um, so importantly, um, we are going to do a giveaway. So don't leave. Actually stay and enjoy this exciting conversation. We're going to do a giveaway for Wardlings and Kids on Brooms this week because we're celebrating RPGs. Um, so definitely stick around. We'll be giving you a code word and you can fill out a form. Um, and also while you're watching, please think of any wonderful questions you have for Denzel because he is obviously an expert with RPGs and we might have lots of good questions for you. So if anyone in the audience has questions, please keep track of those. We'll ask those at the end. Um, also, a few short notes of uh, Vampire the Masquerade Rivals expandable card game. We have just announced that we are doing this. We are super excited. We'll have to chat about that a little bit too. Um, and the teaser page is now live. So if you go to vampirerivals.com, you can sign up so that you can get more information and stay in the loop with that. Um, also, Power Rangers Rise of the Psycho Rangers and Villain Pack Number 2 Machine Empire are available for pre-order now and you just go to our web store reggaegames.com um also if you sign up for our text messaging service you get 10 percent off your first order so definitely when you go to our page pop up sign up it'll be good to go all right that's everything so denzel we gotta jump right in so tell us a little bit about what you have going on so you do podcasts you do rpgs so who are you in the geek community all right, so next you said, my name is Denzel. I am the Black Shivers Nerd on YouTube and on Twitter. Um, I am a YouTuber. I do uh, video game playthroughs. I do K-pop reactions. Um, like I tell people, my channel is like a pot of gumbo because you never know what is going to be on the channel. It's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. You, like, <laughs> and that's why I always tell people that when you do subscribe, hit the bell so that way you know when I drop a video because you never know what it's going to be. It could be a reaction. It could be me playing a video game. It could be me playing like uh, playing the guitar and singing it could just be me rambling about whatever comes to my mind or it could be me talking about D D uh, or any and i can attest to this that i play i went to your channel <laughs> earlier and found some awesome k-pop reaction videos so i highly highly recommend your channel that was a lot of fun to watch so you're just yes. incredibly fun to to check out so yes everybody should definitely go check out these channels so it sounds like you have your fingers in a lot of different things in this community and you just kind of generally enjoy geeky nerdy themes but we're here to talk about rpgs so what mm -hmm. rpg are you playing right now uh, the RPG that I am playing right now is not to sound not to sound basic or anything, but it is Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> you can't uh, go wrong. Fifth edition is killing it right now. They did such a great job with it. Then we're we're jumping on that boat too. Like Wardlands, I just mentioned, is actually fifth edition compatible. So hey, there's nothing wrong with D and D fifth edition. Oh yeah, um, I actually did like skim through the uh, the Warlings uh, book and saw a couple of the of the races and classes races, and I was like, all right, all right, 
I could probably work. I could definitely work some things out with Wardlings. Uh, <laughs> but yes, we're currently uh, uh, currently playing D and D. Um, and then whenever like we don't have a lot of people, then we may play like another like tabletop game. It may not be an RPG, but uh, I know one time we played Betrayal at Boulder's Gate. Um, we nice. did play uh, Villainous, the the Disney game Villainous. Uh, that is a I love Villainous. Villainous is a game that I would would not mind playing all the time, as long as I get to play as Radigan. I <laughs> if I play as Radigan, <laughs> Radigan is I feel like Radigan is the best one to play as. <laughs> um, I love that everybody has a connection to these characters before they even walk into the game. And so you kind of get like three steps into the game before you even open the box, which is great. Mm-hmm. And it makes you remember all these things from your childhood. They're super fun. And it's just a great game. So I think they really oh, yes. hit the nail on the head with that I, one. I love Radigan. And the, the Great Mouse Detective is a very underrated Disney movie. <laughs> I'm just saying that right now. <laughs> the Great Mouse Detective is a <laughs> underrated Disney movie. I mean, yeah, you have people that are like, yeah, it's great, but you don't have people putting it on the pedestal of like Snow White and all the other like top uh, Disney movies, just like how Emperor's New Groove. Emperor's New Groove is another good <laughs> good movie that is like a cult classic, but it's like, no, like it it deserves its flowers. Great Mouse Detective deserves its flowers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I feel really bad. I actually haven't ever watched it, but that's now on my list for this weekend. <laughs> I would probably love this movie. It sounds great already. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's pretty fun so you play oh, a little yes. bit of tabletop um non-rpg stuff too that's super fun and you're Absolutely. you're playing uh D D right now are you, there any other systems that you really have enjoyed in the past um well honestly like D D was the very first tabletop rpg that i did start playing like of course i've always been playing like non-rpg tabletop games but it was D and D that got me into it, and how I got into D and D was because of video games. <laughs> like I know, like some that people that when they when I tell them that when I tell them that I've been playing for almost two years, they go, "Oh, was it because of uh, Critical Role or some of these other like YouTube game YouTube shows that play D and D?" And I'm like, "No, it was Monster Hunter World on the Xbox." <laughs> I was playing with a friend and i just told him i was like yo every time we play monster hunter world i always want to play dungeons and dragons but the thing is i've never played dungeons and dragons and my one buddy was like well you know i could help you out with that and so about a week later i had a bag full of i bought a bag that had like eight nine sets of dice i bought the player's handbook i (laughs) i bought pencils i I went all gung ho on it, and my friend was like, "I said I was gonna help you out, but you bringing a lot of stuff got me thinking that you played before." I was like, "No, I, I just did some research and realized that you know, depending on what class I play, I'm gonna need a lot of dice." So yeah, I started out with eight, nine sets of dice, and um, yeah, let's just say I'm a dragon <laughs> dice hoarder right now. <laughs> like it's, it's we all know how that goes. <laughs> It's to the point that all my other people, all my other people that play D and D, they're like, "Oh, I forgot my dice. I have, I have, I bring out the dice back. Hold on, wait, because like I said, I just came from playing. Nice. Oh, and I, oh, I actually left it at the DM's house. Never mind. Uh, no, <laughs> I left the big bag. Oh, that's terrible. I left the big bag in the at my DM at my DM's house, but he he lives up the street, so. I can just like <laughs> grab it. <laughs> Boy, so yeah, it's... that's really interesting that you just started not that long ago. Like you're just now getting into D&D. So remembering back to when you first started, what is it that really drew you in? Because you already love video games. They're so easy and accessible. Anytime you want, you just pick up a controller and you're going. So what is it about mm-hmm. D&D that gets you excited? Uh, the thing about D and D, and the the thing that gets me excited about playing D and D, is the fact that you know, as a theater actor, I get to hone my craft, um, of acting and improv, and 
you know, creating a character and then thinking, okay, how would this character react in this situation? How would this character talk? How would this character like move? So it gives me, it gives me an opportunity to hone my skills. And then it also helps me working on voice, uh, voice acting just as well. Uh, nice. <laughs> yeah, because, oh, yeah, that's it's awesome. like you, you get, a. Uh, I'll just throw a few examples out there. Like my very first character that I created, Drognor, he was a dragonborn rogue. So, you know, I'm thinking, okay, dragonborn probably has like a deep voice. So <clears throat> he kind of sounds like this lower register in the voice, <laughs> like almost like a growl. <laughs> um, and then there was, so uh, and then there was Langston who was a turtle, uh, my fighter turtle, um, and I kind of got the inspiration <laughs> of him from Raphael from the Ninja Turtles, so he kind of sounds like this, a little rough, a little gruff, but you know, he, he his heart's <laughs> in the right place, you know, it, it, but you know, you, you step to him wrong, you, you're gonna get a glaive to the face, that's just how it is. Um, <laughs> and then awesome. there was one of my favorite characters that I created, um, because the inspiration for him was a combination of Prince and Billy Porter. His na- it, it was a tiefling bard <laughs> by the name of Ray Diablo, but his but his stage name was Mr. Topaz, honey, because he shined even brighter than a diamond, boo boo. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to be in your D and D games. This sounds fantastic. <laughs> So, and, oh, and like I said, it's it's all about like how you can create, like what kind of character you can create, and what part of your personality can you put into this character to make it more fun. You know, I I have like, there are other people that you know like that play like the stereotypical bard that as soon as anyone or anything smiles at him, he's like, I'm going to roll to talk to the to talk to this person you know like the oh boy <laughs> and then you yeah. have others that um and then you have like the like my current player that i'm playing right now um rag rock he's a half orc barbarian um he has a 10 intelligence and a 10 wisdom which means that he has an av- he's average he's not like the one in one is chair no he he knows simple <laughs> math but you ask him about the algorithm, the al- the the algorithm theory. You know, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or Einstein, and he's like, "Wait, what? Like you, like you had like, can, can we go back to shapes? <laughs> can we go back to like <laughs> multiplication? Like you, you talk on pre-calculus. I'm, I'm, I'm still on like, like multiplication tables. Like, come on, fam. <laughs> so I've heard that as. A beginning player, it's easier to create a character that's either the exact opposite of who you are in real life or very similar to who you are in real life. Is there one of those two directions that you like to go in? Or do you, it sounds like to me, you're a little more creative than that. So maybe you don't need to take the easy out with one of those two paths. Um... It does work like that. Like sometimes, like I say, like you create a character and maybe it's like, this is how you would envision yourself in this world of D&D or any tabletop RPG where it's like, okay, I can see myself in this. So then you portray your ca- the character as you yourself. And then you're like, well, how about, or you create a character that has like your flaws that, you know, is like, well, she, well, she or he or, or they, you know, just saying, or they, um, they're the, the timid, you know, like not really put themselves up front, but they're, they kind of play in the back and you can play like that. Um, or like I said, you can be that person that's like, now I'm going to be up front, you know, I'm going to be the talker. I'm going to be doing all this. So it's all about like, what do you want to play it as? And I've done that with a lot of, like a lot of my characters, has different aspects of myself in them you know um like i said like drognor was the rogue so he was the sneaky one you know like and i played around with that one because growing up and even to this day like i could just be like walking and i could be like walking up to someone and be like hey how you doing and then they're like oh i didn't even see like my co-workers i could be at work 
and it could just be us, <laughs> and someone could be in the office, and then I knock on, like, the doorway and go, hey, and I go, oh, my God, I didn't even hear you, like, walk over to me. I'm like, <laughs> you're super <"Thank> sneaky. You. <laughs> Unintentionally. Like, I'm, like, I, I, I roll nat 20s on myself on that aspect, and then, like, Ray Diablo, <laughs> who is the, who is my bard, you know, that's the aspect of me as a performer, you know, where it's like, I'm going to give you the best that I can give you as a performer. And whether you like, like it or not, you're going to have to respect it. <laughs> I've been seeing people playing in my own store who, especially teenagers, use a way to test out social things that they wouldn't feel comfortable doing in real life. So there's a particular group of kids that plays and I can see them sort of experiencing relationships and uh, conflict within their group and learning about how do we deal with this within this safe space of this game so that then when we go mm -hmm. back to school or back to our real life, we can do it in a, a more intentional way, <laughs> at least have a little practice going into that and i think that's really cool so it doesn't surprise Absolutely. me with you that you you play a lot of different types of characters because you're sort of practicing for being on stage and you have so much experience doing that already it probably comes much more naturally to you so i love that i think that's really cool mm -hmm. um but um do mm -hmm. you do you have any types of characters that you just really really like to play like every time you roll a character you're like it has to have this thing so that it's super fun for me to play. Uh, my normal go-to when it comes to rolling characters is that for the most part, their charisma is high um, because of the fact that- <laughs> That makes sense. <laughs> like, like I you're, you're not gonna be able to play. <laughs> you're gonna have a like, tough time like, playing a little charisma character. <laughs> oh, I'm having a hard time playing a little charisma character because my barbarian that I'm playing right now has low charisma. So I was telling them the end, oh, no. like, this is a challenge for me because like the past four characters that I've created were high charisma, even if they weren't like specialized in like weren't proficient in charisma skills. They had a high charisma because that's just me as a person. I'm very, as you guys see, I'm very charismatic. You've seen, like you, you've definitely seen some of my videos. Um, yeah. But for me, it's like no matter who the character is, whether it's a warlock, sorcerer, who or a bard whose spells is based off charisma, or a rogue or a fighter, like all of my characters, previous characters were high charisma because that's just me. Um, and then another thing is mostly is another thing is the dexterity. You know, is also like either a high or a mid high dexterity you know because me i'm i like to perceive myself as acrobatic it may not be as like <laughs> like olympic gold medalist triple axle with a double backflip <laughs> and then land on toes no but you know being in the theater you have to be like acrobatic and athletic at in some aspect mm -hmm. so dexterity is another thing that I definitely have to make sure that I normally make sure or is also like high. Um, but yeah, this, the, I'd I imagine this you're around, barbarian. Yeah. Probably not high on the dexterity either. <laughs> 14. He has a 14 dexterity <laughs> and a 14 constitution. Hardy boy. <laughs> I am the tank. Well, Nice, nice. Well, you're not tripping over your own feet. That would a fall of somebody like that would be bad news. <laughs> oh yeah, and it, especially since he's his background is that he's a gladiator, so it's it's a variant of the entertainer background. So he's proficient in acrobatics mm -hmm. and performance. So I'm proficient in two skills that are based off of stats that I have low that I'm low numbers on. <laughs> Like I said, my charisma's a twelve. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my charisma's a twelve, so and my dexterity's a fourteen. <laughs> well, you, you go with what you got. <laughs> yeah. So, do you have any advice for new RPG players or anyone interested in, say, theater or you know, stand up, improv, anything like that? Just getting into those things because I think they're all kind of connected, right? 
Oh yes, absolutely. Um, like I said, RPGs and D- like uh, tabletop RPGs and just D and D, um, is definitely based in the world of theater improv. You know, because the, you there are people who can who will have sessions and will actually like cosplay as their character or what their character would wear to help them get in the character. Um, and like I showed you guys, you know, I throw voice, I put on voices sometimes, you know, or it's just like, okay, like my, or, or you just like get in the moment, like my sister, she's not an actor, but in the two years that we've been playing D&D, she's been starting to pick up, you know, like little n- niches and tricks and tips in by watching me and my other friend, my other friends who are theater uh, actors, just from watching us, she's been slowly picking picking pieces here and there on how to help better herself. And then she also watches like Critical Role, and she's taking inspiration from like Laura Bailey or Ashley Johnson or Marisha Ray or uh, Liam O'Brien and any any of those any of their those actors. And just like okay, I'm gonna just take this, I'm gonna take that, and just try to mold it and try to make it my own. Um, but more, more importantly, I always tell people, whether it's getting into tabletop RPGs or you're getting into theater or whatever, just have fun with it. Just have fun with it. Be you. Um, because the minute you try to be someone else, that's when it becomes not fun. And that's when it's like, it's not really genuine, um, is what I'll say, is what I tell people, is that um, the more you don't stress about it and just get be loose with it be comfortable um it's it comes naturally you know it comes naturally just like snapping your fingers or something um and like i always tell people especially when you're getting into acting um make sure you study up uh do the do the research of if there's like any art institutions or theaters that take acting class that offer acting classes to uh, definitely check out some acting classes. Um, of course, you know, the internet is free for now. Um, so, you know, like you can Google, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) like Google is free for now. Um, but you can (laughs) Google, um, these different acting techniques and, uh, Mm -hmm. and acting teachers and methods and try to get inspiration from those methods and techniques and to, make it get get yourself comfortable in it and and that's what i like to tell people is that D &D is a way to help you get over you know like if you suffer if not suffer but if you're one who has like anxiety or if you have stage fright or you just don't feel comfortable talking in front of like a group of a group of people you know D &D Mm -hmm. or any tabletop rpg can help you with that because say your character is has to talk in front of a large audience you know what would your character do now you the player may be like oh god oh god but then your character is like i got this you know and then (laughs) that confidence that you have with your character you know that you use to talk to that to that large crowd in game use that confidence to help you talk to a large crowd outside even if you don't want to be and it's like even if the people don't want to be actors but they want to be public speakers D D is a great way and not just D, but tabletop rpgs is a great way for people to help get over their fear of talking in public spaces yeah i i could not agree with that more i think it's so important to just have the confidence that you can do it much more than knowing the techniques or all those little special things that you can get better at and learn about you just have to know that you can get up there and talk and that it's you're not gonna die it's going to be okay (laughs) and i think that's really tough for a lot of people to get over but when you think about it all of us have experience acting to some extent Like almost everybody has dressed up for Halloween and gone out Mm -hmm. and pretended they were a ghost or pretended they were a princess or whatever it was when you're a kid. And you just need to take that and build on that and get that confidence. And of course, role playing, pretending that you're someone else that you can get inside their head is such a great way to do that. So I think that's really neat that 
that we have this tool right here in front of us that not only can give us entertainment that we need to get through stressful times like right now, but also mm -hmm. can really help us in our professional lives as well. That's really neat. Absolutely. So yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. I haven't done a lot of role playing um, or anything like that, but I definitely see the appeal. I definitely need to get into it more. I did a kids on bikes um, RPG session on the Dice Tower a couple of weeks ago with some fantastic people from the industry. And it was actually a lot of fun. I was surprised by how easy it was to jump into that character and say, okay, I'm here, I'm gonna protect the rest of the group because that's something I really like doing in real life anyway. And mm -hmm. even though we had like a ton of people watching the live stream, I was like, okay, we're just having fun, hanging out, playing this game. Doesn't really matter what anybody else thinks. And it was great. Oh, yeah. And I kind of I have that same mindset when we're at when I'm doing a show like so I'll just say like when we did, when I did hairspray um, and they were be like we were having packed houses and wow. you know, like, we would have like a couple people like a couple of the kids um, being all nervous because it's like oh my god all these people and I'm and I would tell them I go the only people that will be able that you'll be able to see through that crowd is like the first three rows because you know the stage mm -hmm. lights ref, like lights up the uh the first three rows or so but after that you can't see anyone else so bear in mind that just put in the, in the mind and the perspective that those other people in the back don't aren't there so just and i'll also tell them like it's just you and me and it's like you and me and just focus on me or focus on who, whatever or whoever the actor or actress that you're talking to or dealing with or interacting with focus on them because the minute you start thinking about the people outside outside of the fourth wall that's when you start getting your head and you know you, the people start getting the sweaty palm and they start shaking at the knees <laughs> and you know like they start fumbling and you know the butterflies and it's like just like don't put too much stress on yourself when it when it isn't needed because all that stress was when we did rehearsal <laughs> yeah, yeah once rehearsal. you're up there on the stage you're done <laughs> yeah. now you just gotta go with the flow <laughs> absolutely nice so have you you've clearly done a lot of role playing as a player at the table have you actually ever done any gming because that's a completely different side of that table if you are in charge of directing that story and getting those players to fun points where they can interact it's a whole different i think part of your brain and things that you have to learn how to do so have you been part of that side of it yet um i haven't really been a dm or a gm um but i it's always been something that i've been interested in because of the fact that you know i would love to create a world and create a story for people to play in um because you know when i was in school one of my favorite t uh, subjects was creative writing and the the lang the language arts teacher that i had always admired the imagination and the creativity that I would have, you know, like you, like there would be some of my classmates would talk about like the, I'll just say like some, like something, something inspired by like, I'll say like, like how to lose a guy in 10 days or something like that, or some movie. Whereas me, I'm in the back of my head talking about how uh, Lucidius and Remus are on this noble quest and just all over like fantasy like it, it literally would be like a fantasy RPG like creative story that I would be writing and my my teacher was like Mr. Zervanos was like dude like you have a brain a creative and imaginative brain inside you you know like because <laughs> when where, where some of my co when I, co-workers when some of my my classmates would go right he would be like you're always going left because you're always thinking of other stuff you're always daydreaming or visualizing something and then you writing it out so i would not mind being a dm but the one thing about you being a dm that. is that i'm like nervous about is you know all the the math <laughs> oh you would be Especially, fine you especially this. when it's like all right you got like 
you got like a beholder and a dragon and you got like like all these bad guys coming at you and now you got to keep in track on this person's hp this person's hp and that, that, that and, and i'm just like <laughs> <laughs> there's certainly some nice accessories out there i know whiz kids makes a lot of really cool stuff that can help gms and players out too, because it is legitimately a lot to keep track of that's no joke mm -hmm. so yeah i think maybe just having some tools at your fingertips would make that give you a little bit more confidence, right? <laughs> be able to do oh, that yeah. better, but I bet you'd be oh, fine. Yeah. I also, um, I personally haven't played a ton of different systems, but I really do enjoy the Kids on Bikes system because it's pretty light that way. It's much more about creating the world and having the stories that you're telling together and very light on the rolling dice and keeping track of initiatives and anything like that. So D&D mm -hmm. is nice because it does have like such a rich world and there's so much fun stuff you can do in it, but it does have a few more rules than some lighter, easier RPGs. So might be an option if you want to start GMing in a more rules light system. Definitely recommend oh, yeah. that one. I, uh, I got it. I actually did get the, um, the kids on brooms, uh, book that you guys sent me. I haven't read it yet, but I was gonna, I was gonna, uh, read that along with kids on bikes. Uh, just reread Kids on Bikes again because I I skimmed through Kids on Bikes and I was like okay like it does it does it's a simpler uh, system to play uh, but yeah I'm def I would definitely be down to like GM and like I said Kids on Bikes or Kids on Brooms I would be down to to GM a game like that <laughs> I just gotta I think find players yeah I just gotta find, find like some, uh, find people that other play you know, like kids on brooms and kids on bikes like other like other well polished i'll say players of kids on bikes and brooms before you know <laughs> i i bring it out into the world <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Well, I'm sure any players that wanted to jump in that group would be lucky to have you. I think that would be very exciting. <laughs> it's all about telling a fun story together. Like all that math oh, and yeah. everything. Who cares? <laughs> That's not the important part. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So we are at almost a little over our halfway mark. So for all of our listeners who have been sticking with us and listening to our exciting conversation about RPGs, we do have that giveaway that I mentioned earlier. So if you would like a chance at winning Wordlings or and and Kids on Brooms together, um, we'll be giving away a a set of that bundle. All you have to do is go to the link um, that Chris, who is moderating for us today, is going to post in the chat. And the code word for this week is Young Adventures, because Wordlings is all about kids and their familiars going on great adventures together and growing up in the process. So that is your code word, Young Adventures. And we are excited to have some people sign up for that. Um, so Chris, uh, do you have any questions for us from the audience? I'm sure we have a couple at least. We do, we do. We have, um, we have a couple, um, Mick from our family plays games is sitting in the audience right now. So, oh, have you, okay. Okay. Have you Denzel watched any of our family plays games? They're a YouTube channel no. that focuses on family board games. Please go check out their channel and everybody watching also please go check it out. They were actually on good morning America a couple of weeks ago and just talking about board games, how to get into board games, what they love about it. And honestly, the banter between Mick and his wife, Starla is fantastic. So they're just very fun to watch. Uh, <laughs> so you'll have to go YouTube check it out. Or... They are uh, on YouTube. YouTube. Or Twitch. Um, they have a great YouTube, YouTube. They also have a great Facebook page. Mick is very active oh, okay. and always has nice things all over the internet and makes people smile. <laughs> So nice. he's in the audience. Nick, hello. Um, what is his question for us? So, so he has a a couple for you, and he wanted to know, um, Denzel, do you play any board games, and do you have any favorites? Who? <laughs> uh, it's okay. Like to I say said, no. I. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> no, you mentioned you do. I know. Do. You do, I do mention like board games. At the um, okay. Like I said, yeah. I mentioned. Um, uh, Betrayal at Borders Gate. I loved um, uh, Villainous. 
Um, of course, my go-to is Monopoly. Um, I do have a, I have a, I think everyone has a love-hate relationship with Monopoly, but it all depends on whether they got, whether they get Boardwalk and Park Place. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing about Monopoly that I think is maybe overlooked a little bit in generic, the hardcore board gamer world right now, is that it's a common familiar thing that you can talk about with almost anyone and mm -hmm. i've even seen like when you watch a tv show and they're gonna present a board game on the tv show as popular as sellers of Catan is that's not gonna be the one on the table then a good example of this um have you seen the tv show blackish yes <laughs> so there was an episode yes, of this that really like struck a chord with me because the entire episode is about Monopoly and their family playing <laughs> it and all of the angst and problems that that creates. Um, but yes. what I love about it is that they put that game on the table and they play it with the audience watching with the assumption that everybody knows how this game works. And if right. Monopoly weren't so familiar to our entire culture, then that episode wouldn't have made any sense. If I'd put mm -hmm. even like I said, Settlers or Pandemic or anything on the table, no matter how good that game is, it's completely irrelevant because you couldn't make that TV episode with a different game. So you you loving Monopoly, I think is awesome. And for anybody who maybe doesn't love it as much as you do, the I still think it's important to understand how cool it is that we have this shared experience as a whole culture and that we can talk about board games with at least the baseline of Monopoly. <laughs> but there's oh, a yeah. lot of fun experiences you can have with it too. Yeah, and like, the, like you said, the people that don't like Monopoly, those are the ones that are always landing on other people's property and then going bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> like they well, don't like the, I can like kind of get, understand they that. The, the brown, they get the, the brown uh, t uh, properties after you get go, after you pass go, you get those two brown properties, like Baltic, and I forget the other one. <laughs> they get those two and nothing else. <laughs> they make it a it's railroad. So they make it a railroad, but that's about it. <laughs> well, that sounds like a strategy issue to me. <laughs> oh, no. That's pretty funny. Okay, so Monopoly, that's your, your final answer? Yes. <laughs> yes, I, like I love it. Monopoly. Totally reasonable. All yeah. right. I like it. Any other questions? You know, it's it's hard because like, you know, I think as board gamers, our reaction is it's no, it's nothing like Monopoly, but Monopoly has auctions. Monopoly has a lot of things that you can help <laughs> tell people. It's like, oh, you think Monopoly is great. There's other games that do a lot more. And those are the ones that I tend to enjoy these days. Like, it's not a bad thing. Right. Right. Although, yeah, I think people I like rolling like, the dice. I'm not a fan of Monopoly, but you give me Yahtzee. Oh, you give me Yahtzee. I tell you now, you give me Yahtzee. It's going to be a good old time, I tell you that. <laughs> well, we're just playing re-themed Yahtzee all over the, the place now. Um, and Mick says he hasn't played Monopoly in 10 years, so I, I think that sounds more like a challenge. That's the way I'm going to take that, Denzel. So if you ever run into Mick, I think you need to have a Monopoly off, right? I think oh, I think that needs to happen. I feel like Monopoly would be a really... <laughs> I think Monopoly would be a great game for our social distancing. Like, I feel like I could set up a camera and we could have a pretty good game of Monopoly just over online. I think that would work pretty well. I think once everyone gets like Monopoly on Steam and everything, we get we, we get the Discord and <laughs> we can just play Monopoly from there. <laughs> Monopoly and Uno, like get some Uno in just as well. Like, oh, he's like, no, nice. because Monopoly, nice. let's throw some Uno in just as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so oh, we responded with a nope, no, nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, he's going to have to answer for that next week when he's on our show. <laughs> 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 Obviously, awesome, has awesome. very strong um, opinions about Monopoly. We were not counting on. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We can all like different things. That's fine. <laughs> cool. Any other any other questions? So, 
he did have a very serious question, and I'm, I'm really curious for your take on this, Denzel. Um, he wants to know your opinion about any of the racism, like arguments that have cropped up recently around D&D and some of the tropes and the themes. Um, so I have been uh, watching some of the stuff going, that people have been saying about with, uh, D&D and some of the characters, like uh, the drow, the dark elf, um, you know, I personally, I don't feel any kind of way, like, where it's like, we should, they should get rid of the drought. No, like, there are, uh, there are, uh, there should be, like, a, a race of people that, you know, they don't see the light of day, so it's like, they're, they are, like, the, 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 the sewer people, and I don't want to say sewer people, but, like, the mole people or all that stuff. So, like, the Duragars that are, like, the, the drow version of dwarves. Uh, uh, the, um, or the dwarf version of drows. And then you, like I said, the drows. And then you also have, like, a couple people that were talking about how, like, half-orcs are, they try to say, like, half-orcs in a way was, kind, like, was, like, racist in some kind of way. And I'm like, it's, it's, uh. Half work, like it's, it's no. There's no. I I can't. I, how are you gonna compare the maybe what because of the hairstyle that like some people will have their their half work or their drow and think oh they're just making it's like blackface in D and D world like no like let's pump the brakes like there are I, as a black man I will say there are some people that just want to be like oh well, what about the drows or what about the dark or you know like they're they're making fun of black people N no they're not like you don't see you like you don't see the drow dancing around with like white gloves on with a big old watermelon in one hand and a bucket of fried chicken in the other one talking about hey y'all let's roll for initiative y'all let's go y'all how's it going y'all like no that's not happening <laughs> but you know like me personally like if someone walks up, like if let's just say if Chris came and said, "Hey, we're gonna, I'm a, I'm gonna be a drow," I'll be like, "Okay." I've never played with someone who played as a drow or a tiefling or or a Duragar dwarf or anything of that matter of magnitude. So I'm like, "Okay, like let's do this," you know. I so I don't I don't see anything bad about it now, like and. Now I will say that there are some aspects in D and D where they're like, like the like they say like the drow, whereas like ninety nine percent of the time people just deem you as bad because of the fact that you are a drow. Where, where the wording in some of this stuff is like, mm, let's let's not add that into it because you know there are people in society where the minute they see a black person, they just automatically assume that they're up to no good or you know like you see like white women or other people like clutching their purse or the bag that they're holding or whatever close to them the minute they see them you know i've i've been a victim of that multiple times or like i could be i could be leaving my job you know like not in not in work uniform it could be my day off you know i could be feeling good about my day like singing to whatever music's playing on my headphones or, to, or spotify or whatever and the person will turn around, see me, clutch, and back away, and I'm like, I, you are not on my radar. Like, my radar is saying, no. I gotta go over here. You over there. Like, no, I'm going here. You ain't got nothing to worry about. I'm going home. You have a good day. But, you know, it's like the certain wording and text and and the text where like you know, like the minute you you come, you approach or walk into this town. People are just going to assume you're up to no good because of what you look like. But then at the same time, I feel like that should also be in there because that that can be used as an educational piece where it's like the drow, like a, the, a party has someone who's a drow and it'd be like wherever they go, the drow character is always getting looked at and then it'd be like, oh, this is how, you know, this must be how, say like Denzel or uh, Andre the, 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 the black nerd, Andre the black nerd, or, you know, like, other, these other, like, black people in, uh, in the, on YouTube and Twitch and, and on the internets that, like, we've had to go through all our life, 
you know, just to where it's like the minute we are able to walk and talk, you know, like people just think we're we're up to we're some we're some good old no gooders. And it's like, no, we're we're just trying to live our lives just like you. <laughs> we just trying to live live to see another day and just like play video games or do whatever we want to do and you're you're not you're not bothering us. You don't bother me, I don't bother you. That's the way I see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously racism exists and it's something that some people have to deal with on a regular daily basis and that's just awful and I really hope that a lot of the social changes that are moving in the right direction right now continue. And Absolutely. I really appreciate your outlook that RPGs can be an escape and also a learning point for that. I feel really, yeah. really enlightened of you to think of it that way. And I think it's also all about finding the right group and having some guidelines and some idea of where you want to go together and how you want to mm -hmm. do that so that everybody feels safe and is happy about what's happening and doesn't ever have to feel uncomfortable because when you're playing your game, you can just check out and have fun and do what you want to do without having to think about all of that real world stuff. So Absolutely. we certainly would never, never want that to be in, in any game that I would play in or that I would run or anything like that. So mm -hmm. I think it sounds like you have a really good, great, really good group where you can kind of check out and enjoy that. So that's, that's really good. Everybody can find that. Absolutely. But, Absolutely. But that was a Great, Mick. I do think that's a really relevant current topic. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, I don't want I don't want like Wizards of the Coast to change, you know, like the Drow or the Durgar or Half Orcs, you know, because you know, like a couple people, you know, like said, like I think you guys should change it. You know, it's not like it's the Washington Redskins. <laughs> it's not like it's the Washington Redskins or the Cleveland Indians where you're like, mm, how about we change that? No, we gotta change that. No, it's it's not like the it's not like a, a sports team that has a name that is derogatory and has been and people have been saying it needs a name change. No, like Drow and Half Orcs and Orcs and Durgars have been in fantasy lore before D and D, and I think it was a. Uh, 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 Tolkien that even said that you know like it has nothing to do with you know like the race like race of like uh, other people you know it's like like it's it's a orc <laughs> it's a half orc don't dig too deep into it like like don't make it bigger than it already it. has to be yeah yeah publisher I think it's really important for us to just check in with our community and really do our due diligence before a game comes out to check with experts in the field to make sure that everything is hitting the right marks and that nobody's going to be super upset when we put out a game and feel like anything bad has happened because of that. So we do um, work with a lot of different people in different areas of expertise just to double check mm -hmm. stuff before we publish it. But I think it's also important, especially a company that's been around a long time, like Wizards of the Coast, to just go back and then recheck because things have changed a little, little bit, even a few years. Mm -hmm. So just doing a deep dive and a double check on all your stuff and checking in with people of the community and making sure that everybody is comfortable with it as much as they can be, I think is really important. We shouldn't just say, well, this was great in the 40s. Let's keep doing it, right? Because clearly that yeah. doesn't always work out very well. <laughs> so I, I have a lot of faith in Wizards of the Coast as a company. I don't know anything about what they're doing or not doing, but I would really like to think that they are kind of going through the same stuff that we at Running Gate like to do. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Um, awesome. So, yeah, good question. We'll, we'll definitely chat Very about that more question. next week if you would like to. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Anything else out there from our community, Chris? Um, well, the last one was um, Mick seems to think that he needs some Clank in his life. So I, I, I think we might need to send Denzel a copy of Clank. I, I think that might oh, I, I think that might 
might be true. So you like board games a little bit. Um, Clank is a game that I know Mick really enjoys. It's one of ours. It's a deck building game. And so you start out with just 10 cards in your deck and they're all pretty mm-hmm. generic, but your goal is to travel deep into the dungeon. It's on a huge board and you, you move a couple of spaces every turn. You're trying to go all the way down to the depths of the dungeon to steal treasure from the dragon. But the problem is that along the way, you have lots of armor, you might pick up some more other treasure. And it, as you move around this dungeon, occasionally you'll make some noise. You'll clank around a little bit, run into a wall, trip, whatever. And as you do that, you alert the dragon to your presence. And every time that happens, you take wooden cubes that are representative of the noise you've made, and you put them into a bag with all of the dragon cubes and everyone else's cubes. And every (laughs) once in a while, when she gets really upset because people have done something stupid, the dragon will attack. And when that happens, you pull cubes out of the bag, and any cubes of your color that are pulled you'll take damage for that. So there's so much enjoyable suspense in the game as people are pulling those cubes out and you're like this close to dying. Because if you die in the dungeon, you don't get to get any of your points. You don't get to keep any of your treasure. You're just dead if you're too far into the dungeon. So you have to be really careful because you also can't win unless you make it all the way back out with your treasure. So the farther down you go, the better the treasure is, but the more likely you'll not be able to make it out and you'll make too much noise. So it's this wonderful balance of, (laughs) yes, exactly. So Mick really enjoys that game and I think you'd probably like that too. It sounds like the Dungeon Crawl version of the old game, Don't Wake Daddy. That's totally it. Yes, yes, that's totally what this is. It's the Dungeon Crawl awesome. version of Don't Wake Daddy. I'm on board. I am on board. <laughs> I love this. That's awesome. Oh my yes, gosh. We and I'm sure my people sure. would love to play Clank. Oh my god, yes, please. <laughs> Well, it's kind of nice, like, if you ever have a week where maybe the DM just needs a break or you're missing somebody that had to work Mm -hmm. or whatever, it's kind of nice to have a game you can pull out and just have this experience together and it doesn't interrupt your game. So we'll send it over and whenever you get a chance to play it, let me know how you like it. That'll be fun. Awesome. Awesome. (laughs) Oh, my God. That sounds Uh, so much fun. Important (laughs) questions, though. So there's playing just fantasy and all of the cards have flavor text on them making fun of generic fantasy things or mm-hmm. there's in space so if you really like sci-fi star trek star wars whatever that one has mm-hmm. parody cards of those things so sci-fi or fantasy important decision <gasps> see that's the thing i like both <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was the correct option. We'll send you both. How about that? That works for me. Oh my God, yes. And if nothing else, at least open the box and read all the cards because they're hilarious. They're super fun. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's like, oh, you guys guys sent me the, um, when you guys sent me Overlight, I, uh, I was like, oh, and then I was about reading it and I was like, oh, well, Where's the screen? Where's the GM screen? <laughs> I was about to go on Amazon and buy the GM screen. <laughs> oh no! Oh, you just write to us and tell us. That's silly. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll, like, I'll make oh. you a deal. I will send you the GM screen only if you promise to actually GM a game. It doesn't have to be overlight. You just have to get your wits about you and actually GM a game. I'm thinking of the Raven like, Claw poster behind him. I think I know which one it should be. I'm just saying. Oh, I think you need some kids on brooms. I think you should do that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. We'll make it happen. That sounds like fun. All but, right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> nice. So we just have a couple minutes left. And I did want to just tell people, people who have been watching us this whole time. Um, just a reminder, if you want to sign up for our giveaway, we're giving away Wardlings and Kids on Brooms, which you're going to GM soon. The code for the, the full link for the form is going to be in chat. And the code word is Yan Adventures. So that will be super fun. We're excited to give some away. Um, next we are going to be chatting with Mick, who is in the chat right now. So everybody say hi to him. Get ready to chat with him next week. Oh, wait, is that next week? Yes, yes, it is. Okay. 
calendars are hard. Um, and before we go, Denzel, this has been so much fun. Please tell people where they can find you, where they can watch you and um, check out all your awesome videos after we're done with this chat. Um, so once again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you can find me um, on Twitter at Sherwood's Nerd because uh, at Black Sherwood's Nerd is too long for Twitter to have. Um, so I shortened it to at Sherwood's Nerd on Twitter. Um, you can also find me on Instagram, Black Show is Nerd, the whole thing. And then, of course, YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash Black Show is Nerd. Like I said, um, it is a box. It, my channel is essentially a box of chocolates because you never know what you're going to get. Um, and instead of having, like, one channel that's strictly K-pop reactions and another one that's just video games and another one that's just music, I'm just like, no, I'm just going to combine all of it and present it because that is because it's me and I'm going to give you guys everything that I like and what I'm passionate about so like I said it could be a k-pop reaction um it could be me playing video games which by the way I am playing a game uh called the Wintermore's Tactics Club um it's so if you're into like the if you're a fan of like the Final Fantasy tactical RPGs or any of those tactical RPG games um and is also a fan of D&D, because in the game, it's not really D&D, it's C&C, Curses and Catacombs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's, it's based in this boarding school, and essentially the, the principal of the boarding school is saying that we're going to be having this snowball fight to determine which, after, which club is the ultimate club, and the character you control is a part of the Tactics Club, which is the club that plays CNC. Um, it's a very fun game, very cute game. Um, and but that's the one that that's one of the games that I'm playing right now. Um, so again, check that out. Uh, like I told, like I said, there's also videos of me uh, playing the acoustic guitar because I am teaching myself how to play the, the acoustic guitar. Um, it's a challenge, especially when you're trying to get the chord finger placements and it at certain points it looks like I'm throwing up gang signs in my room while trying to get the right <laughs> G note <laughs> like trying to get the G chord but yet I, I think like I'm like claiming like the blood and it's like yeah <laughs> okay there we go <laughs> uh, and then there's also other stuff where like you'll see like uh believe there's other videos if you got it's gonna be you're gonna have to do some dig deep in but there's videos of me I actually like on stage um, or just me doing monologues. So it's my channel is pretty much it's a one stop shop of content. Um, so even if you subscribe to the channel to just watch me play video games, hey, come along. You know, I to me, I could I, I don't really mind if people say, oh, I only subscribe to you for K-pop or I only subscribe to you for video games or because you're talking about tabletop RPGs. Like, that's what I am interested in. That's cool. Like, I'm not I'm not really stressed on every video that I have or make is hitting like 100,000 views a day. Like, if I make a video and it gets like 100 views a day, I'm fine with that because it's like I'm satisfied with what I'm making and I know later on down the road it may not happen now or the next day or next week but later on down the road that video may catch the eye of someone and then that person is going to send it and make it and help that video go viral so I'm I'm not really I'm a YouTube content creator that's not really thinking about short term I'm thinking of long term because I don't want to be a one trick pony where it's like all I do is just one thing no 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 there's plenty of YouTubers that are one trick ponies that are that are making a killing on being one trick ponies me I I like to show you that I'm versatile <laughs> I'm like the Swiss army knives of YouTube content creators <laughs> <laughs> that's so true I love your channel that's really fun there's a lot of good stuff there's something Thank there you. for everyone right <laughs> oh, yeah. very cool well 
I really, really appreciate you spending some time with us this afternoon. It's been so much fun to chat with you. Also, thank you, Chris, um, who's behind the scenes today, but helping us on the back end, moderating and doing all of the video Woo! stuff. We appreciate you too. <laughs> and thank you for all of our wonderful fans and chatted with us this afternoon. So thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your evening, a great weekend, and we will see you all next week. Have fun. Bye. Ladies. Ha, ha, ha.